Hello. Hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome to Feedback Friday. It is Art Edition, and I am your host, Jacob. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the stream. Gonna make some art. Hope you're all well. Um, so today we're gonna be working on a brand new character for the folklore forest. It is for a soggy, wet area. Um, we're doing a kind of tier one collector style character, so kind of like lower grade, um, but uh, should be an interesting one. Um, howdy, 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 welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, it's going to be kind of like, uh, there's kind of like a suggested idea for the character, which I think is pretty good. I'll run it by you all, see if we want to go with that. But it's a collector uh, character for the pond area. Um, and the suggested kind of like idea for the character is like a beachcomber. So someone who would go around and just kind of like collect valuable debris along a shoreline stuff washing up. Um, so I think that could be kind of like a fun kind of like collector idea for someone at a pond. Uh, although I guess, obviously, pond is a much smaller body of water, so uh, might not find quite as many valuables as uh, along an ocean. But um, I think, you know, for a mouse, uh, that scale is pretty decent. Um, plus, you know, they're probably, like, looking for delicious, you know, things that wash up. Um, so, yeah, let's see. I think I'll start with that concept. Um, and... If anyone else has any other ideas for, like, a collector character that could be kind of along the shoreline, uh, feel free to share. Um, another one of the kind of elements of it is I want to kind of, like, keep it in that folklore kind of, like, design. Um, so kind of, like, the era of all the other characters that we've been working on is kind of, like, much more kind of classic Victorian kind of, you know, low-tech kind of stuff. So... Uh, I, I like the idea of the metal detector, but I think I'm going to kind of just kind of maybe do a more kind of like low tech version of that. If we do go for that kind of concept, like, like a magnet on a, a, a branch or something like that. Uh, collector character is, uh, just kind of like internally, um, what we've been using for this kind of group, the subset of characters where, um, they're kind of like more like a farming phase. Um, so you're kind of collecting the resources that you need to kind of make a certain kind of progression using those resources. So you are collecting these things off of these mice. So collector mice. Um, but yeah, we, we kind of like don't have a kind of like set language necessarily. We just kind of use different terms depending on what kind of gameplay we're, we're talking about. I think, yeah, for like the kind of uh, same technical thing of mice for like other areas like the floating islands, we would refer to them as like farming mice and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of like lower tier, you catch them to obtain the resources to make certain kinds of progression. Um, but yeah. Jacob, will there be any hedge maze like themes? Um, I think that there could be more in the future. Um, I guess I feel like we kind of did something, maybe I'm just thinking of like the labyrinth or something like that, but, uh, currently there is nothing designed for that. But if, if there is a compelling kind of like thing to, to apply such a design into, I think that would be fun. Hedge mazes are neat. Um. Let's see. Dozing rods would be a great alternative for a low technical detector. Yeah, like kind of, you know, searching for, for kind of, you're dowsing for objects, I guess. Um, Trying to remember, was the concept of like dowsing rods that you just kind of like follow one of the lines and it's supposed to lead you to like a body of water or something like that? But I guess the reality is if you just walk long enough, eventually you'll hit water. I'm not sure. Uh, 
you know, hear folklore, I always imagine something hideous sneaking in the tall trees. Yeah, no, there is, there is kind of like, um, almost like a cryptid kind of concept behind like the, the like creepy old tales, the folklore of, of like the witch of the woods kind of idea. Uh, so I, I totally get that connection. Yeah, I think I think some of them can kind of like have a little more of that kind of like, you know, more grim uh, story that's passed down vibe to it. Um, I don't think we kind of like leaned too heavily on any of that. Um, a lot, a lot of them are more kind of like on the fairy tale end of it, where it's kind of more kind of like a, a fant fantasy whimsical kind of uh, idea. Um, but what's really interesting is kind of doing research on kind of like lots of the folklore and, and fairy tales and stuff like that. Like most of them have roots in like much darker, more disturbing tales where there's like no moral. It's just like a horror story for children almost um, to kind of like scare them straight, do your chores, respect your elders kind of thing. Um, and uh, and then, of course, like as as those stories get passed down, they have kind of like being reformed into kind of, you know, more just positive and like your dreams will come true kind of thing. Um, but also with more kind of like perhaps morals in, in some of them anyways, but yeah, definitely a lot of like darker tales, uh, they were, they were told. Um, all right. Well, I'm thinking, boop, I'm going to pop over to my, art page. Uh, so we're starting fresh on this one. Um, we'll probably go most of the day. Should be a long stream. Um, I'm planning on just kind of like getting as far along with this as I can, possibly even finishing the mouse. Um, we'll see how that goes though. I'm not, not certain I'll be able to get it all done in one go because these mice have been um, a little more kind of detailed and involved, usually taking around two days. Um, the mouse I've been working on this week is, is quite a hefty one that required a lot of concept kind of exploration, but it's it's an interesting, important character, so hopefully I got that right. Um, but yeah. Well, let's see. Would a mouse collecting goose feathers to make a feather quill pen be a collector character? I mean, yeah, I, I, would, I would imagine that kind of mechanic definitely. And I mean, like, I guess you'd also consider it, like, I think the reason why we call them collector characters is because the mice in concept are collecting things that you then kind of like obtain from them. Um, <laughs> hoping the parental power type gets some love. I, I think it has been abandoned. <laughs> it may never return, I'm sorry to say. Not, not too sorry. So that was made on a, a, a whim, um, and I, I don't think we ever really had considered just kind of like, oh, if we add this, we're going to have to kind of like potentially do something with it. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, Bigfoot is like a folklore tale, yeah. Um, tale Weaver's Otter Cousin, the Tail Tangler. Instead of spinning yarns, the one gets tangled in it. I love that. Okay, the magnetic field of things is supposed to pull in the dowsing rods, lead you to things like water. Also used by psychics to find things because ghosts pull them where they need to go. I see. I can see the kind of logic that they have behind that. Is if they like feel one that's heavier, it's kind of leading them. Sure. All right. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, parental abandonment, how sad. I'm sorry. Just wasn't meant to be power type. From, what, 12 years ago? I'm pretty sure we did that for the Terrible Twos, which was, of course, the second birthday. Yeah, that was a while ago. Um, <laughs> Nannybot 2.0. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
folklore also have creatures that are yeah like cryptid style yeah yeah i mean there's there's tons of that stuff it's pretty great um but yeah for this kind of like first kind of dive into the folklore forest i think it's going to be more kind of like um fairy tales and and kind of you know more kind of i guess modern stories um but of course like most of them have kind of their roots kind of mixed in there somehow um, but we haven't gone kind of like grim dark on anything uh but it could be interesting to kind of like explore that I'm just like what if oh now this is this is not a thing that we're working on i literally just thought of this but i wanted to share because i thought it was kind of interesting um how we kind of like create rift areas of areas and they're kind of like the more twisted kind of um, alternate version of that place. Um, it'd be kind of interesting and, and very meta in a way if there was like a rift version of the folklore forest and that ended up being like the grim dark versions, the, or the origins of those stories. like a lot more witches eating children for no good reason yeah an interesting concept but uh that is that is not a, a thing that's happening i just wanted to share that concept because i thought that was kind of kind of fun um the folk rift forest yeah. okay all right all right so we should probably make some art um so um I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe like a character kind of wandering along the shore, kind of like, they're just kind of like poking things with a stick, just like, is this something? Do I want this? Like, they're tier one, so we're not looking for like some kind of like, you know, brash fighter that, that is going to kind of like destroy your trap or anything. There's kind of like fun, interesting characters to look at that maybe tell a bit of a story. Um, so I don't know, maybe maybe they have like an arm just kind of full of baubles that they've collected. Um. <laughs> For whatever reason. Can think of one reason. Have you seen um, oh, what is the movie? Uh, it's on a train. Apocalypse. Hmm. Can't think of it. Snowpiercer. That's the one. Uh, it's got one of the. It's got a very amusing quote in there. A bit of that. Um, all right. And by amusing, I mean disturbing. But... All right, let's see. Yeah, Snowpiercer, yeah. Um, hmm. Do a baby version of every single mouse in the game. Actually, there was a point when one of the things I wanted to do, and I kind of still want to do it, was have like a plushy collectible of like every single mouse. And it would drop like one in a hundred. Of, of your catch of that mess for like every single mess so you know like you could go around and get all the silhouettes of every mess and many people have done that it's definitely something that is doable um but the idea of kind of like getting every single plushie of every single mess would be like way harder to do but the thing about those is like you could trade them on the market board so a lot of them would be completely worthless but others might be like the Beanie Baby craze, you know, that kind of idea. Um, <clears throat> yeah, minuscule mess hunt. There you go. Yeah, and it, it had, like, the um, the the egg detector kind of system for tracking it, maybe. If you want to just add them into your collection, but clear your inventory, you just smash it. <laughs> Quantum. And then each of those have a chance to drop, yeah, just, like, a pocket dimension of, of themselves. Uh, no. Okay, so can have kind of like, I don't know, 
like a, a floppy sun hat because they're just kind of like wandering the beach all day. It's very sunny. Um, let's see. We should we should focus on the thing we're supposed to be working on. Um, need more collectibles. I, I think that like I like more collectibles, but I want them to like have more of a purpose than just kind of like it's just a random thing that you know like sometimes with an event it's good because it's kind of more of like a keepsake of like I was here during this event um, and if it only kind of like existed for that one event like I feel like that has more kind of potency to kind of like be an interesting thing to collect like the eggnog uh, the the keg nog what, what did we even call that but like it was a sealed keg of eggnog that then, like, this was something we planned, um, had kind of erupted into the next year's villain. Um, and that was probably one of my favorite collectibles. Uh, so it's like a burst open container uh, of eggnog. Um, egg dog? Um, <clears throat> and then uh, give them, like, a little fishing vest, maybe. That'd be good. Um, but yeah, so, like, if, if like collectibles are more like actually collections of things as well, like that's kind of got a little more kind of purpose to it in a way. Um, collectibles shouldn't be kind of like any kind of gameplay mandatory thing though. I, I, I think that they should be kind of like a little bit more of like a side quest. So they could be like extra challenging to obtain. Um, stuff like that I think could be pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> but like, yeah, the idea of like the the run of you know little plush mice on every single one of them um, would be monumentally insane amount of assets to create so it's not actually a thing that that's going to happen but the idea that like those are kind of like uh, you could collect all of it. I guess it's similar to how the eggs are where there's just kind of like you know almost like a goal of trying to get all of them although at least for the eggs it's kind of like even if you're not there to kind of collect them all, um, you can crack them open to get, you know, nice rewards. So it's never a bad thing to kind of like be hunting eggs during the egg hunt. Um, yeah, like some some collectibles, I'm just kind of like, ah, I don't know, like, I guess like the, um, the confetti collectible, I'm just like, I just keep, you know, you, you get more and more of it, but like... Uh, doesn't necessarily kind of like feel like a collectible at a certain point. So, I don't know. Some of them work better than others, I guess is what I'm going to say about that. And then, yeah. So, I want more collectibles, but I want them to like feel interesting and exciting to kind of like, maybe not, maybe it doesn't have to be exciting, but. I think there could be better. There, there are better collectibles than others. Um, so, just being smart about introducing more and more of them, so that it's not just kind of like noise. Is this most scavenging or doing community service? <laughs> uh, they're scavenging. Yeah. That's Peter Pan shadow. Wait. Is this mouse collecting Peter Pan's shadow? Just kind of like, no, running away. And he's like, I got you. <laughs> yeah. Be like, little hat. That'd be funny if that is actually what's happening. Poking your tiny mouse. <laughs> the nugget mouse, just poking it. Um, let's see. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like the, the just kind of like wandering kind of idea of this character. Like they just wander up and down the shore, just kind of finding stuff. They might like have made decorations out of them or something like. Cause you can find some like very pretty stuff um, in like the floatsome, uh, like beach glass, that kind of idea where it's just kind of like debris, but 
you know, you could have like a, a hunk of glass that's been just kind of tumbled around in the sand for, for ages, and it just becomes a smooth kind of like nice disc um, that's actually quite pretty. Um, so people will actually like comb a beach, become beachcomber to like discover things like that pretty driftwood that is kind of like interesting shapes um, and just kind of like combine those in, in cool ways to make, you know, some pretty cool looking stuff actually. Um, but of course there's other kind of like actual valuables that might wash up and that's kind of like also why people do this. Yeah. Looking around for, for something here. Yeah, it's poking a giant lurking river monster, just kind of like, like, eyeball, just kind of like, what are you doing? Just like a slug. Alright, um, that ice stock made me think of Commander Keen. If anybody played that. Swimming shorts. But, like, what would, would Victorian style swim shorts be? I, I feel like it'd be like that kind of like the vests, uh, not, not vests, but like they're kind of like tight fitting and they like have straps. Is that right? Kind of makes me just think of like strongman outfit. Mm -hmm. All about them stripes. All right. Well, I don't know about swim shorts, but like I, I kind of want them to seem like they're very practical, I guess. How did I get started out as a digital artist? Um, well, I definitely drew a lot in my youth. Um, did well in art class. Uh, ended up kind of just pursuing that as kind of like what I focused on in my studies. Um, but I ended up getting kind of like, I think my dad might have given me um, like a, a really new at the time. Um, kind of digital tablet that was like uh, the Intuos 2 or something like that. Um, so pretty, pretty like good way to kind of get into it is just like getting a tablet and like getting your hands on some kind of drawing program and just experimenting. Like it was very clumsy and awkward for the longest time because you know, I was just kind of like learning how to do it, and then I'm like, I don't know, I can do shading and stuff with like the dodge and and burn tool. Um, actually, you know, I'm pretty sure that I, I started with like a mouse doing digital on on like uh, Microsoft Paint. I remember I did a a drawing of like a Starcraft fan art that I did with like a marine in kind of just like a sandy desert. Um, that probably took a stupid amount of hours, but, um, just kind of, you know, trying things. Basically, um, the way I, like, first kind of transitioned from drawing on paper to drawing on the computer was actually drawing on paper to start, scanning that in, and then trying to paint it using, like, a program like Photoshop. Um, and, yeah. It's just kind of a new, like any any kind of um, medium, it just has like a, a learning curve. And once you 
learn how to make it do what you want um, as, a, as just a different tool. You can just apply that stuff. Um, so, you know, uh, like I used to love doing acrylic painting um, as well as just kind of like sketching with kind of like a pencil, but um, <clears throat> after trying a bunch of different painting styles like gouache, watercolor, uh, oil, I kind of liked oil even more because there was more kind of blending and I could do like really kind of smooth transitions and I liked kind of the ability of how I could render with that. Although acrylic was always faster and this is when I was kind of like studying at school. Um, but both of those have like a big kind of like commitment to them, like cleanup and setup and stuff like that, especially oil. Um, I didn't have water soluble oil, so I had to use turpentine to, to actually work with that medium. Um, and uh, being that I was kind of like, you know, in, a, in an apartment trying to do oil paintings and stuff with turpentine, it wasn't the most ideal setup um, kind of painting on an easel in, in a room um, with poor ventilation. Not, not a great way to, to do that. Um, and it, it just kind of was a lot of hassle, but I also, you know, digital art was kind of like becoming more and more of a thing. I had kind of like a little bit of kind of practice with it because I actually had some, some tools of the trade, but like my school didn't really let me use that for anything. Um, they were like, Dig digital isn't the way of the future. Just focus on doing uh, acrylic paintings, I guess, for editorial magazines. That's that's where all the jobs are, I think. Um, of course, they were very wrong about that. Um, I actually ended up like helping teach my digital class in like, my final year because Basically, the teachers knew nothing. Um, so, I don't know, I'm just kind of rambling now. But uh, yeah, I just kind of just picked up stuff. It mostly self taught, really. Just kind of tried it out, experimented. Was horrible with it to start for many years. Just the more you use it, the better you get at the tool, I guess. Hmm. Um. I want them to have like a rope that just has kind of like debris, like maybe it's like a net that they can kind of throw out if there's like something kind of like just a little bit out into the water. Um, so it's got like stuff dried on it even. Um, <laughs> the internet wasn't supposed to be the future either, right? Yeah. And now like, I don't know, like 40% of people are working remote still. Um, just things change involved and like even if the pandemic was gone I, I assume a lot of studios would actually consider remaining as a remote situation just because that opens new potential for for them um, like I know that we've discussed uh, you know if we were to go back to the office um, before the pandemic actually was even a thing we were working remote one day of the week um, but we would kind of like potentially you know, keep a bit more remoteness that we do now. Uh, maybe only going into the office like twice a week, um, something like that. But yeah, the times change. You gotta kind of like evolve with them. Kind of an important thing. Um, but yeah, I would recommend just kind of picking up like um, a really cheap tablet. They're they're super affordable these days. Um, I know that kind of like when I was looking into them way back, there was like the, the Wacom Bamboo was kind of like the cheap model that was really good. It was way better than what I started with, significantly better. Um, but nowadays there's, um, other companies that are kind of like thankfully competing <laughs> with Wacom because for the longest time they've just been the monopoly, like. They were the only ones that produced that kind of good technology that everyone had to kind of just buy. There was no alternatives that were, you know, any good. Um, but Monoprice and uh, Huon, other other companies seem to have kind of 
manage to break into it and so you can get much more affordable uh, digital tablets these days. So if you want to learn digital, I would say get a tablet and that's that's how you start. Hopefully um, I, I gave some kind of useful feedback and answer in that. I'm not sure if that's ultimately what you were asking. So sorry if I just kind of rambled uh, and didn't answer what you were looking for. Yeah, I, I started by just being interested in that and just trying to figure it out for myself because no one really taught it. Um, yeah. Okay, so I like I like the idea of them being kind of like a very sunny kind of shot, you know, kind of like overhead. Get like some nice kind of lighting on it, cast shadow with the the sun brim hat, stuff like that. I think that'd be a pretty picture. Um, Peter Pan shadow getting away here. I actually like that idea a lot. I don't know if we'll keep it, but it's, it's a very fun idea. Um, also just for like, you know, doing like a portrait image of a mouse that might kind of like change the composition a lot, make that more difficult. Um, and it also might not be very clear as to what is actually happening, um, but just a fun idea. Okay, so maybe we should try a couple other sketches, just so we don't kind of lock in on the first idea that we have, which is something I do often do. Um, although because I do want to try and get this done today, maybe I don't want to spend too much time exploring. Um, let's see. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's a very good point. All schooling trains you for a world that will not exist when you graduate. I can't disagree with that. Uh, they do always seem to lag behind, unfortunately. Um, do you have an idea on the new area before drawing the mouse, or do they just give you a rough idea on what mice uh, the new area needs? Um, so, yeah, I definitely like... I'm very involved in kind of like designing the area itself. Um, and we, we definitely kind of like work out what is the area? What are you doing? Um, what's what's even the, the gameplay and mechanics before we actually even create any mice? Um, it's not always been the case like that. Some like early on, it was kind of more like, I'm just going to like create a bunch of mice that feel like they belong to kind of like a group, if even. Um, but yeah, like definitely... It is a case of like, we know what the area is. We've kind of like worked it out as a team and we kind of like develop that together. Um, and then we create the mice to kind of fit that. And more and more it's kind of like, okay, we need mice that fit this mechanical need. So the collector mice, for example, are mice that have resources that they drop in a very specific uh, point of the gameplay and area. Um, so using all those elements, it can really help kind of like give definition to what the mouse could look like. You know, they need to be able to drop a certain kind of resource um, at the pond um, and at the lowest tier of the pond. So the shoreline as opposed to out into the water. So now there's kind of like, okay, cool. The concept of they're going to be on the shore. They're not very strong and they're going to have loot on them. Um, and you go from there. What do you, if you extrapolate those mechanical properties, you know, this is what you get. Uh, a character combing the beach um, for resources that they hoard, uh, that kind of thing. But yeah. Could there be two mice in a picture, like a whole group that do the same thing? Yeah, we've done that. Um, there's the Fluttershy mice, I believe they're called. Um, there's uh, like the the like stack of thieves. There, there are a few. We don't do it too much. Um, it's always with kind of cutesy little characters, like you know, doing something as a group. Um, the uh, what are they? The the pygmy swarm. Um, yeah, there's there's a number of them. Okay, let's see. It's one. Background mouse, identical foreground mouse. Oh, 
I don't know if we've done that where there's like the main kind of like scene mouse and then like one just kind of like in the background kind of like doing the same thing. Uh, I think when we do group mice, we try and make it feel like they're connected as one. Um, but that's an interesting idea. I guess, I guess maybe, um, no, not even like the grublings, but yeah, the swarm of pygmies, I think does have that where there's kind of like a bunch of them in the scene and some are more background than others. If I'm remembering them correctly, I don't know if I am. I haven't looked at that piece in a long time. Ooh, good question. How long does planning for a new area normally take from conceptualization to it being added to the game? That is a really tough question um, to answer because it is such a diverse range. Uh, some ideas that were like, we know we're going to do this one day, and we have some ideas around it, could be from literally like, year two of the game and we're just not like at that point where we want to bring that thing um so like an idea could exist in you know forever um but some things where it's like okay we need to come up with a new event um like we're gonna we're gonna do a brand new halloween uh and that's gonna have this concept and we work that up um and that has a deadline right we need to get it for this year's halloween let's say that one will start, you know, uh, as early as we can, but sometimes it's only a few months in advance. So we only have kind of like, you know, a few weeks to kind of like try and hash out the mechanical systems. Um, and then as we're kind of like building prototypes, we might start to create some of the character artwork for it um, or, or just like assets that we're locked in on. Like, it's like, okay, we know who the boss is going to be, so we can kind of like start work on that. Even if the gameplay changes, we're keeping that boss. Stuff like that. Um, so I would say events are kind of like the fastest turnaround, but I would say it still takes months um, of kind of like planning and, and kind of like development. Um, but like when it comes to like a big area, um, those, those have taken, you know, even when we kind of like have kind of like a pretty good idea we slot it in, depending on how big it is, it can take like a year um, from kind of start to finish. But um, yeah, some some like are much shorter, others like, uh, for example, Floating Islands was actually like, I literally pulled out, here it is, I think, is this the book? This is right here. Welcome to Feedback Friday Art Edition, where I talk more than I draw. Um, let's see. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, this looks like the book. Let me see if I can find the very first mouse hunt drawing ever in here. And this will show you how I started the digital art for mouse hunt itself. Pretty sure this is the book. The wild thing is I look through this every once in a while, like the sketches, and I'm like, oh, I kind of remember what I was thinking when I was sketching that. It's wild. Because this is like over 15 years old. Um, so we're up. Find it eventually. Oh, here we go. I saw a trap. Okay. Where are you, White Mouse? Pretty sure this is the book. I hope this is. I know I have a few books that were kind of like drawn in around the same time. And I, I would like to just show you, you know, random pages of this, but um, not all of it might be appropriate for stream because life drawing and stuff like that. Let's see. Maybe this isn't the book. So I should have run into, oh, I just saw the granite mouse. There we go. Okay, so this isn't the very first mouse. But this is actually how I used to draw the mice. I would draw them in with a poly erase pencil crayon, which is like a colored pencil that you can erase easily. Um, used to be using like the animation industry, stuff like that. Draftsman engineering. It's very handy. 
because um, you could scan in and kind of like remove that color when you scan. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then I would felt marker outline it, right? Um, and that is how I, I initially drew the mouse hunt mice. And I know that, okay, that's not the mouse hunt map. I saw a map that I drew. Oh, this is like a bunch of like concepts from way back then. Let's see. I really want to find the, the white mouse. Just like a bunch of like the thing is is like the the book is like mostly like scrawling and stuff because I actually like I don't know, I have a lot of like ideas and game ideas and stuff like that. And I, I actually write down just here is like gameplay mechanics stuff. Like it, it's a sketchbook, but it's full of just kind of like I don't know, I'm gonna just literally pages of just text notes about like mechanics and okay maybe it's not this book maybe it's this one. Oh, this might be it oh. who are you I see there's like a scribble of a mouse here don't think that this is the first one then no I have notes on Let's see, Zugzwang, hmm, Plank Run, way back when though. Yep, definitely have a lot more mouse hunt kind of notes in this book. Just kind of little scribbles all over. I was trying to come up with like a t-shirt design. This was like back when there was kind of like Oh, I wanted to like explore non-lethal as a thing and just like an early kind of like Larry drawing, I guess. The bots. Yeah, so this definitely isn't the um the first book, but what I was trying to get to with this was I actually have in here from like the very first year of Mouse Hunt um gameplay ideas around dirigibles. And that whole kind of like, you know, universe of gameplay. Um, like it was literally in the first like year or two. I'm pretty sure it was like the first year um, I was exploring that kind of concept. Uh, yeah, just like literally just pages and pages of notes is, is what I did. Um, but yeah, so it's probably in this book. Now I think about it. I hope this isn't too boring, me just kind of like looking down and being like, yeah, I'm looking at cool stuff that you can't see. Ooh, here's an interesting page. So that's the monster miss there. But this was my original idea for the charms and charm conduit. Um, originally, I wanted it to be a thing where like you had slots that you would unlock. So, um, and it was kind of like powering up your shield. So you would start with like conduit level one and then upgrade the actual conduit and they would unlock more and more slots and upgrade your shield. Uh, and the charms themselves were like really simple, like plus 100 power or plus one luck. And you could like stack them. Uh, but eventually we kind of like wanted to go into more of a um, really customized kind of, you know, the charm does something really special. And so stacking those wasn't going to work. Um, and we also didn't really kind of like build the system for that. Um, oh, man. This is also kind of hilarious. This was uh, like early kind of hope you can see that kind of concept of like the Larry intro that I wanted to do where he's like he like a pop-up like kind of pops up on your screen and he like busts out and like it's very kind of like silly and he's just kind of like 
But like, look at how I drew Larry. That doesn't look much like Larry, does it? No mustache, no feather in the hat. Yeah. It does sound like auras. Yeah, that is very much like what auras became. Yeah, this was like... I don't know. I wish that I had like dates on these and stuff because it's very interesting. Aha! There's the page. This is actually my very kind of like early dirigible concept and here is like a map that you would fly around on and you could change your your kind of like uh, your path that you're flying along and like so it'd be like a grid of kind of like nodes that you like every hunt you could like kind of shift over um, and then you try and like run into good things and dodge bad things but it, it would have been like crazy active gameplay and it obviously is very different now um, but yeah, basically, for like 12 years, well, I guess 10 years, probably closer to that, um, I'd kind of like had some ideas for doing dirigible stuff. And then, you know, eventually that happened. But that was probably one of the more um, heavily, the most heavily developed area, I think. Um, so that one took a long time. Uh, even after we kind of like shelved it for as long as we did, when we kind of like brought it out, it still took a very long time to like fully develop it. Um, but considering how much was going on with the area, it was pretty fast at the same time. Cause like older areas that had more, oh, sorry, I'm like drawing and like, forgot to change the screen. There we go. Um, older areas that have like a lot less mechanical going on, even less characters uh, took more time uh, kind of like, I guess, I don't know, per capita, probably not the right term at all, but, but just the amount of stuff in those, if we were to have done those today, would have been like much, much faster to have done because we're just smarter about how we do everything these days. A lot more kind of effective and uh, figured out how to do things better. Do you like how I just kind of like see a random comment and then go on a 20 minute long tangent that no one asked for? I hope that's why you're here, because you're not getting the art, apparently. Welcome to Jacob's Random Ramblings Day. <laughs> Back when Larry was a young boy. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, no, it is really fun to kind of like dig through that every once in a while and just like be like, oh man, like things have changed so much and like just remembering kind of where we came from. It's pretty neat. Okay, so give me some other kind of concept for um, this character. So collecting at the beach. What we got? Or are we just like, I like this character, let's go with it. I almost want it to be like poking a bottle, but then you know it kind of makes it think, makes you think like, oh, this character is gonna have like treasure maps on them, you know. And maybe that will be the case one day, but that's not like a mechanically like, yes, this is a mouse that you catch and it has treasure maps, right? That is not a thing. Um, so to like potentially imply that is a little bit kind of like, uh oh. So as fun as, as, as interesting as it is to have an item like that, I think instead. Do we even want the, the character to be poking anything specifically? Metal tech? Yeah, actually, I kind of like the idea of like the, the metal detector, but it's like just like a magnet. Whoa, not that hockey. Yeah. Like a metal detector on on a stick is kind of fun. There, now we're doing the multiple mice. Doing the same action. Alright. Maybe this mouse would have like decent gold on them. 
low. I don't have any gold on hand to uh, check, but I don't think is gold like magnetic. You think I would know? I don't think it is. Yeah, if it's real gold, it will not stick. It ain't. Need that ferromagnetic activity. <clears throat> okay, let's see. There, there are suggestions that I saw. Okay, um, collecting seashells and rocks. Yeah, actually. Oh, yeah. Like a cute little character would be kind of fun to to draw. Kind of like whoa! I like found like a big kind of. Seashell. Okay, let's see, I'm already like, oh, I like this character. I want them to have like a swimming cap on. It's like bright. It's kind of cute. Um, hmm. You know what? There's seashells involved in a different part, so that will actually be kind of confusing if I have a character holding a seashell. So I got to change that into something different. As cute as that was. Um, Nugget Mouse 2.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even even smaller and more kind of adorable with the, the stick poking. What if they just like are kind of holding up a stick and it has like something kind of like hooked on the end of it and they're just like, look what I got. stars in the eyes kind of thing. Just kind of like floppy garbage. And they're like, wow. Shwing. <laughs> hmm. Larry's sandwich. It's Larry's soggy sandwich. It just has like. Of sticking out of it now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hello, hello. Happy Friday to you. Yes, yeah, starfish eyes. There we go. Just stuck to the face. Um, I kind of like the swimming cap idea. So I don't I don't draw enough like cutesy nice so I think this would be fun if I can kind of like give it the right identity to go with the mechanic because it's like I want them to like have loot right hmm. 
Yeah, the extendo claw. Nice plus surfboard. Okay. A surfing mess would be fun to draw. But it doesn't quite work for this specific character, because like I want them to be not on the water. Like I guess if they were holding up a surfboard, they're they're like on the land. I'll be, you know, um, but I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like it fits with the folklore feeling as as well. Um, when I think folklore, I don't tend to think surfing mice. Um, and I suppose kind of like cutesy mouse in kind of like an old style. Swim swimming outfit isn't necessarily very folklore either, so you know, maybe we need to rethink the outfit here. Um, maybe just kind of like a cute little kind of like you know um, Sunday best kind of get up, but like out on a, an adventure and getting it all kind of mucky and dirty. So they're stomping around in the swamps or something like that. So some trousers with like suspenders or something. Suddenly feels very Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh no. Just one big pocket in the front. Oh, maybe they, yeah, maybe they have, like, just stuff stuffed into that pocket, and they're just, like, got a new thing, new treasure on a stick. Just, like, the beach treasure hunter, but, like, it's a kid. Oh, hang on. Be right back. Someone's at the door. Okay, I'm back. It's just a quick little package delivery. All right. I almost want it to like have like a frog stuffed in its pouch or something. So I feel like that's what like a kid would collect at a, a pond. Um, yeah. Oh, something like over the garden wall. That was that was a good, good film. Really interesting art direction in that. Let me... Very, very cool art stuff. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does it does have that vibe. I love that little teapot on the head. <laughs> so cute. Oh yeah, the pouch, the little kind of drawstring. Okay. I'm inspired by that. That's that's great. I don't know if I'll do the teapot on the head, that's a little too on the nose with it. I like it though. And that's that's kind of like folklore story vibe to it, you know? Um, yeah, I think I'll even make the proportions a little different. I like this character. I think I want to go with this. Um, even though I think this beachcomber character does fit the bill very well, I actually want to explore the potential of this one. So, just because I feel like, I don't know, there's something here that I haven't really explored. Uh, and it'll kind of like make the set of characters a little more unique, I think. Um, but just, yeah, like a cute little frog under the arm would be really cute too. Yeah, a net-like pouch, that's good too, yeah. 
<laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow it up a little bit. Um, it's still not like to the scale I needed that, but actually, what's kind of useful about doing little kind of drawings is you avoid kind of getting too nuanced with the details um, too early on. Okay, okay, okay. So what if I'm actually gonna make another copy of this character just so that I can try kind of a couple different poses. So I think rotate the stick to be kind of like more kind of like planted on the ground. By their foot. Like so. And that'll kind of like give more potential to show off the pouch stuffed with goodies. Package came in for you. Um, okay, so just gonna smudge that. Instead of it being like a frog, I'm going to make it a tadpole because that kind of like makes more sense as to the scale. Okay, and then. Hmm. <laughs> marshmallow on a stick. I was roasting marshmallows last week. It was great. Out, out in cottage country with the family. Have a nice time. Basically, all my clothes smelled like campfire. It was wonderful. Okay. So. Try scaling up the noggin because honestly, if like the head is the same size as the body, that's just like super cutesy, chibi. Um, now the the head kind of like swimming cap doesn't quite. Fit as well because they don't have a swim swimsuit on. So I think I want to give them like some kind of headwear though. I think that'd be fun. What would they wear other than a teapot? Because I don't want to, you know, overdo it on references. I actually like that. And it, it kind of seems like, yeah, that's something that they might have discovered along the, po the pond shoreline. It's a fun idea. All right. Thimble.
And it definitely looks like a kid kind of playing, you know, make believe. Like, I am the king of these lands, kind of thing. That's pretty cute. Ears a bit more because it's kind of more heavy on the head. They don't have very big ears because they're a young mouse. Oh, absolutely, George. Yeah, did I ever read the Let the Hunt Begin with comic? I did, definitely. I was following it every week. Yeah, actually, um, the same writer, in case you uh, don't know about it, there is a series of books that he's written, uh, Matthew Summers. So go check it out. Uh, I think they're on Amazon. Pretty sure that's where I've gotten them, but I've, I've gotten... Some of them signed by him, and I intend to get all of them and get them all signed too. But yeah, Mouse Hunter turned author. Check it out. And and yeah, like the Let the Hunt Begin was um, kind of like a huge story that the web comic never actually like got through the whole thing because um, it was just a very big tale. Uh, but yeah, absolutely loved that fan creation. And it, it actually inspired some things that ended up in the game uh, and other kind of like concepts that I, uh, I quite quite like. Just the, the take on, on kind of like seeing the, the world in that light. Um, so yeah, it's fun stuff. I like to kind of see what the community creates and just like seeing people create things that are based off of something that you know, I created for them is just like this really awesome thing that is very special. Very, very special. Oh, it's just like a swimming goggle on the end of this. What a treasure. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I, yes, thank you. I do want to put like just a bunch of stuff stuffed into the, uh, the pouch here. That, that was like the whole reason I wanted to change this pose a bit so that I could like make room to kind of like stuff things into the pouch. Just kind of yeah, put the goggles in here. It's like, yep, this is a collecting mouse. It's got stuff. Heaps of stuff. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to change the minnow to a grub. Because that actually uh, works with something else. Um, Based on the scale of other drawings, I feel like the grub would need to be like this big beside this character, so maybe it won't be quite that. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like the tadpole. It's cute. Maybe I will keep tadpole. Also, I want to like fit the paper on the character. Let's make the eyes even bigger. I 
Colonel's too cute and innocent now. Okay, okay. I'm gonna copy this and then try seeing if I can make the grub work because that actually works with some of the mechanical stuff. And now it's a little less cute. does not work there. No. Now I'm kind of like, what if it's just like riding it like a mountain? <laughs> let's let's just go wherever we can with this concept. Okay, so now I'll move, I'll move the character up here for a second so I can fix the legs a bit. But like now they're not a collector anymore. They're just like playing a character being like, I am king of this beach. Onward my steed. But what, what better place than Feedback Friday to explore concepts that just might not work at all in the game. You just like have like a hall of goodies that they've collected on the beach and it's just like slimy gross stuff. And then yeah, like a page. further away and then it's it's his hands on its neck like the kids do with a big dog. Yeah, okay. Oh, there's so many like different avenues I want to explore with this character. But like some of them are like, okay, this is like mechanically better suited for what I need the most to be. This this design is like Kind of cute. Okay, so I might as well just express what the grubs are about, just so that we have a little bit of context. The grub is like the thing that you're collecting as a resource, so it's kind of like I don't I don't necessarily want it to be like, oh look at this cute friendship that we have now to use the grub and make something out of it for crafting purposes. Um, kind of feel bad about that. Um, so I don't know if I want to go with this, although it's like very fun storytelling visual here, right? Uh, hmm. Mm -hmm. Mouse pet system went. No, Tadpole. Yeah. Yeah, Tadpole's pretty cute. Maybe there's like a grub in the background wanting to eat the Tadpole. Not that that makes sense, but... <laughs> yes, exactly. All the other mice are picking up grubs and this little guy comes riding. <laughs> like, look, I got one of them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's perfect. The grub wrangler. The grub rider. The grub whisperer.
have rope at the neck of the grub would make it kind of more like wrangling grubs. Kind of like that. Okay, what if... Alright, alright. Maybe it's more like the grub is kind of off to the right. A little bit more. Okay. And then characters kind of got the, the rope around the grub. Also have like kind of like lashed on just like a bunch of kind of beach goodies that they've collected. So they're going along the shoreline just kind of like using that stick to grab goodies. There we go. That feels more like, you know. This mouse is just kind of like putting the grub to work, and it's just, it just happens to be a very, like, you know, determined little guy. Got a plan, a mission, an adventure to fulfill. And the grub is just a means to an end for it. I guess. <laughs> Bag full of grubbling scent charms, full circle meta. <laughs> Just sitting on a grub for it is sure happenstance is good too, yeah. Hmm. It doesn't even notice. That could be fun too. I do want there to be like an element of kind of like hunting for goodies on a beach, I guess. So could be that. That's kind of cute. I, I do enjoy that. Um, this one is cute. I like the tadpole. Okay. So what if this, but instead there they're poking the stick into the the uh, the sand, and like a little grub is like peeking out instead. Because now that I'm kind of like trying to make the grub work in the scene. I'm like, well, how can I make that work? It has made a discovery. I'll make the nose looking down at the ground, but this way we get to keep the tadpole, which is fine. So we'll see what wins out. Maybe it's just like a little bit of a lump of, of like colorful grub, but like mostly covered in sand. So it's like, I don't know what this is. 
and I don't need to have like a big illustrated shiny grip. Although the way that they've been colored and rendered in the other pictures is actually very cute. It's not a horrifying gross grip. But this kind of makes it a little bit more like, what is that? Unless, like, you're you're stealing this little mouse's friend. And, like the the flotsam and stuff nearby, because then this this kind of like turns it back into the original kind of beachcomber idea. Yeah. Leaving the grub on a trail by throwing food in front of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those are all good ideas. It's just kind of like conceptually uh, how involved is the grub to the character. Because like in all the other drawings for, for like these characters, the collectors on the pond, um, they do actually have like a grub in the image. But they're just kind of like an item, right? And the using the grub as a mount and kind of like adventuring with the grub feels more like, you know, oh, this is the friend of this mouse. Um, so I just kind of I wanted to make the grub feel more like an item because it's just like a resource that you collect. I don't want it to have personality, I guess. I don't know. It's an interesting challenge with this game is like wanting to create very adorable and cute characters that you like want to be friends with and it's like now go catch them but what does catching really mean it's it's up to the hunter's interpretation just adding them to your pokedex the mipsodex Grub could be munching on the stick. That's cute too. It's just like, wait, I need that. <laughs> a rope around the grub pulling it looks like uh, dragging it home. Yeah, that could work too. Just kind of like hauling their catch. Right now it kind of looks like they're digging it up, which kind of works. I think it with this cute little tadpole friend. And then the tadpole is like the mouse's friend. And maybe that's a collectible. Who knows? Probably not, but it'd be fun if it was. And then they'd have like a little, little piece of page in their pouch along with all their other goodies. <laughs> the king isn't paying gold for you to make most friends. Maybe that's why the my, the most situation never improves. It's because everyone's just making friends with them. Nah, I feel like this kid wouldn't wear sandals. They have muddy feet. And then they would have like seaweed and shiny things like stuck to their thimble because they're like that shiny. I'm gonna keep this and add it as decoration. So just some some like sand glass.
this feels more like they're they're like just kind of scrounging around on stuff that washes up on the shoreline. Now I don't feel as bad about like collecting grubs off this character. have a Larry link for after lunch. Alright, let's see. I don't know, I kind of like this. Just kind of going around, discovering things that wash up and collecting them. And it's like, what is this super shiny thing? I think it works. And it's very cute. Alright, let's just take a quick look at the other ones. So this one is even cuter, undeniably. Um, so I might just have to justify this one somehow. <laughs> um, and then that one, cute, but like, not as cute. And then the, this one is just kind of like more like, yep, that's, that's a beachcomber. Um, but this one just has like more personality going on, because I like it. I, you know what, I'll message the art team over over my lunch break and uh, be like, what one do you guys want me to do? Because I'll just blame you guys if, if other devs are like, this doesn't fit. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that right now, because I still have half an hour before I go on lunch, and I'd like to just kind of continue on this piece. All right, so there's this one. And yeah, exactly. The grub riding one could be carried like carried on a stick style and then that way it's more like this kid is just kind of like clever and you know isn't like necessarily like my best friend this grub and more like I know how to, you know, get around using the grubs. Um, This one, sorry, I'm just sending these off to the art team to see if they have any opinion to share. Cool, all right. Not even sure the, the very first kind of rough concept.
seems like the uh, the art team loves the Grub Rider as well. Sorry, I just need to grab a file for someone real quick, too. So... Let me see. I think this is... Slack, it's being very slow now. Sorry. Oh. Alright, that might take a minute to upload. Bad time to, to like upload something when you're streaming, but at any rate, looking at the art team feedback, uh, yeah, everyone's on board with, with the Grub Rider. Okay, cool. I'm glad, because I'm like... I, I just enjoy this character more than any of the other ones, so I want to draw this one. Um, and canonically, you know, we're going around catching all these mice anyway, so why not take their grub now? <laughs> uh, the moral dilemma of my son. Carrot on a stick? Yeah, we can do with carrot on a stick. I like the the page on the stick too, but but uh, cause, just because it's like the face of like, oh, what did I find? Is very cute. Um, but he could just be like having a good adventure too. Just kind of you know. Just kind of like onward. What would a grub want? A leaf? There's that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if that file is uploaded. Still not uploaded. Oof. Maybe I'll just link the file through Google Drive. I think that works. that cool okay I think that's all good now Issue. Uh, Alright, well, let me know if that link worked. Okay, anyways, back to art. Um, so we could do kind of like found a treasure on the stick, or kind of like onward grub, let's go. Pretty happy with either.
I don't even know if it needs a carrot on a stick at all. Just kind of like commanding the grub. Just like, yeah. <laughs> and then just like, yeah, a little bit of kind of like seaweed on the end of the stick. Because that's what they use to like pick up debris. Hmm. I still like the face looking at whatever is on the end of the stick. I think I might go with this one. It's very cute to me. And it's kind of more clearly like, oh, they're using that stick to pick up stuff. Uh, maybe we can do some fun lighting with this too, I feel. frog foot in there or something. <laughs> Alright. I'm thinking this is the one. I'm liking that. <laughs> yes, if there really will be a grim dark folklore for us, this can be the big boss. Seeks revenge for taking his grub. Perfect. So I feel like we're pretty well on track. Um, generally when I'm working on kind of like a mouse during a stream, if I can kind of like get the sketch and flats blocked in before lunch, we're in a pretty good position to get near complete by the end of the day. So I'm thinking that I can get the flats blocked in and then we'll go on lunch. So I have another 18 minutes to just kind of block in. The sandworm rider. And then it's just like cute little worm noises.
legend foretells of the Grub Rider and his rise to ultimate power. Hmm. Okay, that's pretty cute. The Grub's favorite leaf with scrap paper as seasoning. <laughs> I kind of wanted to have like a bite out of it. And the grub is just kind of munching away on it. And it's like, oh no, my treasure. Nom, nom, nom. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Okay, that's kind of cute too. And it's like, what did you do? That was a treasure. Okay, I like, I like that. And with like really nice sunlight kind of striking this, I think this will look really cool. It'll just be like a nice little story piece. Just something I'm trying to get better at. It's kind of like creating more of a story in the, the characters. Nom, 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 nom. Cool. Okay. All right. 15 minutes. I'm going to start blocking in. So move this layer to the top. And we'll just group all this into a folder just so that I have those. These are all old ones. That's a blank layer, so I can keep that. Old sketches. I'll just buy that, and then we'll take this, drop it down to about 30% opacity, and we'll use our occlusion brush. Um, now I'll just start with the grub and this guy. Kind of got like orange. is kind of like more yellow. Yeah, like ends with like a purple butt. Something kind of like that.
Okay. Move on to something cuter than that. <laughs> uh, so the mouse, we'll just make it kind of like a lighter brown mouse, maybe. And then the uh, trousers will just be like kind of a, a light denim, maybe. Although, probably not the right fabric. Now, what would be a good fabric for that? Cotton shorts. Sure. And then I'll do the thimble and the layer behind, I think. Maybe it should be a layer in front. Well, I have the hair peeking out in front, and this ear, so I think I just need to, because like some parts overlap, other parts go behind, so I think if I use the mouse as the layer in front, I just need to choose what one's in front and just work with that, but the mouse, you can be in front, and I just need to erase selectively. Okay, and then... Cool. That works. And that works. to the grub to make it a little bit shiny. Okay, 
seven minutes. All right. So behind, we have this kind of like net full of the treasures that this collector has collected. Um, but I think all of it's just junk. is going to have to go in front of the grub. So, make that a separate layer that I can put in front of the grub. There we go. Should it just be like propped on top instead of strapped to it? Like it's just precariously balancing on its back. Maybe like two ropes lashed around like that. Since we're kind of like having the kid have like a yoke kind of style bridal, whatever you know, terms are, let's see. This will go on top here because it's going to go interact with the hands. this one be a bit more taut like he's trying to turn or whoa kind of slow down grub you're crawling too fast I must appreciate this new treasure I've discovered good because we only have three minutes left before lunch so okay, and then treasure pile here hey we gotta get the triangle brush in nice I just gotta triangle brush it hello thanks Roxanne get some kind of beach shadows going. So just kind of
we can we can add much more better details uh, when we actually start to render that stuff. But I kind of wanted to give a little bit of that kind of like lighting atmosphere. Um, oh yeah, and the page on the end of the stick. Just do that as a layer above. Why not? Jump, jump, jump. Who knew that Grebs loved eating literature? Okay, and uh, that we've hit the launch. Um, so I'm going to give this a save. And I'll switch over to. Um, We'll kind of like watch this drawing come together mode while I take lunch. And then uh, when I come back, we'll render this up. I actually think we'll finish this today. I feel pretty confident with this design, uh, which is great. Oh, boy. I get kind of stiff when I'm just like. Um, all right, so. Pop up the little video so you can kind of see where we started and where we got to. Um, and I'll put up a little timer, and when I come back, we'll have a Larry link to uh, enjoy and also, yeah, render this to completion today, probably. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, I'll put up a timer so you know when I'm back exactly. Um, and uh, I'll see you soon. Let's see, we need to put it for 58 minutes. All right, I'll be back after lunch. See you then.
Hello. Welcome back from lunch break. Eh, we're back. Um, so, uh, during lunch, I decided to, like, keep peeking through my sketchbooks. And I did manage to find the white mouse. Um, and just, like, I was looking through stuff. So, this page here, let's see, it's, like, like, the very first kind of, like, stuff written down about Mouse Hunt, it was, like, drawing four bases, five weapons, four mice, crumbs? Are traps set off? Like, would they need to be drawn in, like, act, like ready and, and caught mode? Uh, mouse icons? And then I, I, like, had a thing for, like, cheese sizes, like crumbs, chunks, wedges, bricks. I didn't know the, first, the four cheeses to start, so like cheddar, Swiss, marble, brie. I spelled brie wrong, though. Um, and then I started to like write down ideas. Interestingly enough, here I have like lethal and non-lethal designs like listed as such. Although I did, I did seem to think that a catapult was non-lethal. That's interesting. Portal to Happy Mouse Land. The, the weird thing about it, like, how my my sketchbook was kind of, like, filled in with ideas is I had, like, regular, you know, um, just kind of pencil and then the, the, like, cold erase. So it's kind of like maybe I came back after and filled in more details. Kind of seems like how I do things. So here's... One of the most interesting pages to me. This has like a list of the mice, and this is the first like actual mouse drawing that got into the game. Um, so it's kind of like, was the granite mouse actually the first mouse I ever drew? Kind of seems like that. And then it looks like I drew the steel mouse after. I'm like, here is. Um, me trying to like figure out what the steel mouse looked like. And then, right after the steel mouse, our friend the white mouse. That is the original original mouse there. Um, and then zombie mouse. What a lovely fella. Uh, I stopped kind of inking them pretty quickly on. This one, the drawing? For the ninja mouse, like here's some concept stuff. The drawing for the ninja mouse here is like actually like not bad. Not bad. I feel like the, the sketch turned out better than the final image. Uh, and then here's like me trying to figure out the pirate mouse. I actually quite like this piece still. But like I like how I made like a different face for him here. And he's just like, oh man. <laughs> Yeah, the classic steel mouse was pretty interesting. And then there's the classic gold mouse. Diamond mouse. And then I kind of... Uh-huh. Here is a early drawing of the leprechaun mouse. Just kind of trying to figure that out. This face is just like... Yeah. <laughs> Give me your gold. Um, but then this was the actual drawing that I, I worked off for the original one. Um, so if, if you've never seen the original Leprechaun, that's still just a sketch of it. Uh, this page is crazy. This here is like one of the first kind of like game design proposals I had created for my son, aside from like trying to kind of like figure out how traps and stuff work with layering and stuff like that. It's a PvP mode in Mouse Hunt. So you would you would buy a cage add-on and then when you own one, you enter like a hunter battle mode, and then when you battle each other you like catch the mice and then send those mice at each other to like pillage each other and destroy each other's mice. Stuff like that. And then you'd like buy upgrades for them or like Hold more mice and stuff, and it's just like a whole PvP idea that never did anything. And this was like trying to figure out the, 
the base marionette kind of drawing there. I actually really enjoy this base here. It's pretty good. Uh, and then Jacques. You know, just Jacques. But yeah, so that's pretty wild. I know, Mobster Mouse. It's interesting. I think the Dragon Mouse was created around this point. Because um, I have, like, map stuff. And the, the Dragon Mouse was interesting because it wasn't actually drawn in the sketchbook. I think that was the first, like, fully digital mouse that I created. That was the Burglar. Because, um, like, let's see. Here's, like, early map stuff that I was trying to, like, figure out. This was before we actually had the map drawn, right? Um, and this is, like, kind of, like, a more expanded version of that. And I think for the map, I probably actually made it on printer paper because I was, like, making it bigger and scanned it enough that there was, there was quite a few mice that I made on printer paper, and who knows where those are now. Yeah. It's wild seeing some of the stuff. Just because, like, concepts were, like, I don't know, surprising when they happened. Um, and I had, like, a treasure map minigame that I wanted to build. That is not, like, treasure maps now. It's more like a grid that you hunt. Oh wait. Okay. Now this is here I have like some dragon mouse sketches and I think maybe I just scanned in that face and then painted the body um, based off of that. And then here's um, the very first kind of early trinket ideas that I showed you earlier which turned into charms, but in the back end they're still called trinkets. So, aha, here we go. Here is the Tribal Isles. Um, so that was drawn and added to the map afterwards, right? So we had the map at that point that was drawn on like printer paper, scanned and rendered, and then this was added later. Um, but what's kind of interesting is like, I, I found one of the pages, it lists where the mice should go. Like, these mice belong to these areas. Um, I showed this one earlier, but the monster mouse. And then this was, like, the first idea for charms, effectively. Um, but it's kind of like, okay, these mice go here. And the dragon mouse was supposed to be in the mountain, uh, not the tribal isles, which is kind of interesting. But then, of course, we were like, oh, no, it's too epic. we got to, like, push it back. I think that was one of the first mice that, like, we held on to and brought out later. I have like story ideas, other game ideas. Here's like more about the actual treasure hunting. You like kind of like use a grid system and kind of like kind of close in on the target by, by kind of like digging up different areas or something like that. Kind of interesting. It's like the ghost mouse. I really only did the the inking for like three of the mice, um, and then all right, this is fun. I know it's coming up. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see. So this was like earliest ideas for the dirigible stuff, because um, that comes after. Uh, but here's like the ambush trap there quick concept, um, and I worked with Tyrell to make that one. Uh, let's see, yeah, here is the dirigible gameplay stuff, and then, yeah, Dragon was saved for the end game, and then there was even notes in here, like, at the end of Mouse Hunt, the game, like, that was what I wrote, like, upon beating Mouse Hunt, you earn a cool item for the dirigible game, because I was like, designing it to be like its own game. And then, oh yeah, that was actually around the time that started the design for Mythmonger. Um, interesting. Let's see. Almost at the end, and then we'll get back to doing what we're supposed to. 
but I just I took a trip down memory lane here and it was really fun. So this is all Mythmonger kind of design stuff. Um, and here is kind of like the faction kind of like triangle that I really wanted to do. Or it's kind of like, depending on what actions you took, you would kind of like become part of a different faction. And there was like a whole other system of mechanics that just never ended up being coded in. Um, here we go. This here, if you hate the Tribal Isles gameplay, you can blame this page. It's, uh, it's got it all. And it is just as convoluted as you'd expect. Just kind of like, do this to get that, to get that, and that goes to there, and these go to that, and those go together to do this. But then that goes there, and then these... Oh, and you have to get these, and these quantities, and these orders, and they combine here and do that. <laughs> uh, that's that. Whoa. Yeah, fun stuff. Um, I actually, you know what, I should do a stream one day where I actually scan in, like, these pages and we can, like, actually look at them together and, like, you can see the notes and details and I think that'd be a lot of fun. I'd love to do that sometime. But yeah, lots of, lots of little fun things that never kind of, like, made it out of that sketchbook. Uh, but, all right. I'm going to share the Larry link and we'll do some art. That's what we're here to do. All right, Larry link in the chat. Kapow. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Um, and like the other sketchbook has some stuff in it too. Uh, but yeah, like it'd be, it'd be really cool to like try and figure out like when those were made. Cause a lot of them were made in like 2008, I think. Uh, cause I noticed like, as I was going through, I had like notes on other kind of like jobs I was doing. Cause I was still on commission, uh, when doing all that stuff, I was kind of like getting paid by the hour and I was tracking my hours for the mice and, and traps and stuff like that. And I had notes about like other, uh, freelance work that I was doing and when they needed to be delivered. Um, so that was like 2008. Uh, but yeah, I could kind of like build a timeline of, of some things and it'd be really fascinating. Mm. If we ever put together like a mouse hunt art book, I'd love to like plug some of that stuff into it to kind of like create a narrative around the beginning. But yeah, there you go. Plank Run's journal stream. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, memory lane is really neat here. And I think there's a lot more that I can show. It just it's hard to like actually show it when I'm just kind of holding up like a sketchbook and it's like inverted uh, or, or mirrored. Um, and then there's also stuff that's like, I'm trying to cover things because, you know, maybe I don't want that on, you know, full display. Cause it's like old phone numbers, not that they even work anymore, but it was interesting cause I was looking just before the mouse hunt stuff. Um, a lot of the sketchbook was filled with kind of like how to like build up my business and kind of like make contacts and, you know, work on portfolio, get like government grants or, or kind of like um, create my own company, all kinds of stuff. And I found like industry people's names and phone numbers. <laughs> like, like I had a, the name and number of someone at Rockstar Games and I guess I just never called them. Um, but yeah, like a bunch of other kind of studios and like people who are kind of like at the tops of things that I'm like, oh, I recognize that name. Huh. Curious. Um, so some people I, I'd like met and hung out with. And I, I know people in those those studios and stuff um, since then, too, which is pretty neat. But yeah. I think at that time I, I was like, Rockstar, no, I couldn't possibly. And that was probably accurate. I really wasn't a very uh, a great artist, but I don't know. I am glad that I ended up doing the mess on thing, personally.
actually be like holding it and kind of yanking it like that, or the way it was. Eh, I think it works. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Larry. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it'd be very hard to find um, a team and project that that wasn't more kind of for like fulfilling, just kind of creative wise. And, I don't know. I just get to be a part of it all. And like, I don't think I'd have a live show with uh, other studios. Not how those tend to work. All right. So I'm pretty happy with how we block this in. Um, Stuff like the the face and the eyes, we'll we'll kind of like work that up as we were rendering rendering those pieces. Um, so I say we just keep going. Till it's done. All right. Um, let's just start with the mouse because that's. Always fun. All right, I'm going to drop the sketch down to like 10%. <clears throat> um, what we could do is figure out kind of like the light quality first. I want to go for something that's kind of like nice and bright and colorful. Um, so nice kind of like bright sunny day. Uh, and I'm, I'm even thinking of keeping like just some like really good saturation, like just really bright and fun colors everywhere. Because I, I feel like a lot of them, uh, of the pieces I have are a little more muted and earthy and like that's pretty good. But um, there were a few pieces that came out recently uh, where it was like really pushing the kind of like adventure, uh, fairy tale fantasy kind of like color palette of like really bright and saturated and, and like uh, you can almost think of like Adventure Time kind of like um, just cartoony, colorful. Um, and it still kind of like really fit with all the other pieces we've done, but it felt much more kind of just like, I don't know like fun and lighthearted and big adventure. And I feel like this character is on one of those big adventures. So I kind of want to like get a little bit more of that palette working for it. Um, so I think just kind of, you know, maybe just trying to push the saturation higher than I would normally might be the way to do it. I don't tend to work in that kind of like range. So, this might be a bit of an interesting challenge for me. You know what? That's what I like, especially on the stream for some reason. Just like, what is something I'm not comfortable doing? Do it live. Uh, yeah, so maybe something kind of like that, where like the shadows are saturated, and like the light is still kind of saturated. Yeah. The angle of the light. I think we could bring it more forward even. I'm just kind of keeping this kind of orange and purple palette, I think is nice. Um, and then Oh, maybe the um, the outfit is kind of more neutral, a little. Oh yeah, the that's a good point. Thank you for reminding me about the decoration on the thimble. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna gonna steal that. Cause it's a good addition. Is it this guy? Was this guy? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I should be able to just do all that and a little bit of that. And yeah. Slide that over, fill it up a bit. in both because I want to do that on a layer above. I'm just kind of blocking this in so that I don't miss that detail. I'll just leave it as green. It's more seaweedy. Okay. <clears throat> Turn that to full opacity. Opacity is good. All right, so we're working on the mouse. Um, we have kind of like a bit of a lighting quality reference. So I'm going to do kind of like this fur soaking in some of that orange glow. Go a bit cooler. Um, but like decently saturated. That's so saturated, but you know, I'll try it. Maybe more of this purple is better. I'm curious to see what what I can get out of the palette. I might be overdoing it, but don't know if it's far enough until you push it too far, right? Honestly, the mouth should probably be on a different layer. Same with the eyes. just easier to like adjust the shape of it because I can just kind of like paint in and erase as opposed to painting over top of the face and then if I wanted to like erase the shape a bit I'd have to actually paint 
back what was painted over in the first place. So layers are great. Then, ooh, that's an interesting idea. What if it was nighttime and the glowing of the grub lit up the mouse? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Almost too good. Hmm. Hmm. Might have to try that. I mean, Based off of all the other characters, they are kind of like in the daytime. So, um, hmm. They would be pretty cool looking, though. That's often a good excuse for anything. <laughs> yeah. That's how it's done. Just throw a good idea and now you're the conceptual planner. Love it. Um, let's see. face layer, move the nose. Okay, I'm going to go with this, just because doing the night scene would be kind of like more work. As cool as it would look, I feel like I'm going to get something pretty good with this, just because like, I'm imagining like nice, bright, colorful sunlight. Um, and I actually want to experiment with kind of like pushing the saturation of that kind of color palette. Um, but I also want to experiment more with kind of like a cool night scene. For the sake of uh, being kind of like faster, I think I'll stick to this. But it was very tempting. And a very good suggestion. I like it. Glass. Alas. All right. Um. So that here is very peachy. I think I'm gonna cool it here, because it's going to be more in shadow. But, like, see what I mean about kind of, like, keeping punched up uh, colors, that, like, bright saturation. Hopefully this looks good. Not, not very used to kind of using, like, really bright palettes, so we'll see if I can pull it off.
guess if I wanted to get like deep shadow, I can go darker, but I guess I want to like push the saturation more for that. Looking less excited and more horrified. Uh, let's see how to adjust that. Maybe even more horrified, apparently. Even more horrified. <laughs> I need to get that wonderment back in the eyes. They're like, whoa. I think the lip. Feels like it's kind of jutting out, like more pouty than anything. Um, I kind of want it to be more like a, as opposed to a. So let's see. Um, be more kind of like smiling, I guess. Like I want them to be like, onward, kind of, yeah, a little more smiling. a lot more, maybe too much. Uh, weirdly lopsided. Oh, you know what I haven't done is one of these. Okay, that looks okay. I was worried that when I flipped it, I was going to be like, ooh, that's bad, but yeah, don't hate it. So that's, that's good. Just kind of like a bigger tooth. That's kind of cute. It's just one big tooth. <laughs> the like juicy eyes, just like, oh, it's pretty fun. I like it. Okay, I feel like that's kind of like evoking the emotion a bit. Okay. Number of is clipping into the hand in a weird way, and this hand just looks bad. Um, so I think I need these fingers to kind of move on up. Okay. 
have that here on the inside. facing the light well enough. Actually, no. So I'm just kind of like, how do I balance that much saturation? I kind of want to knock the, the stuff lit a, a bit. Yeah, maybe that's how that art style works. Maybe. Sketch down even more. the sketch up just a bit. Uh, that's good enough to kind of like move on. I think we'll come back to it and do the you know actual render pass. Um, what else? Knees. I wanted to get more of that orange. 
orange in the uh, the kind of like ambience. Um, well, let's see. Pink for the feet, just like the hands. Um, cool. All right. Now I think I do want to try and get just a bit more of the orange on the top side of the shadow covered hertz. Not quite there, but I'll move on. Okay, for the outfit itself, someone mentioned kind of doing more like a cotton shorts. Um, let's see. What was Tom Sawyer? Did Tom Sawyer wear as a new fit? Yeah, I mean, got them in kind of like overalls. They look kind of blue jeans. Oh, dimples, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, it could work. Honestly, where to put the dimples is actually the question. Um, to kind of like give it a bit of a smile. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like he's got a weird thin mustache. I'm going to come back to that. <laughs> it's not, not quite working for me. Like, I think it would look, look good, but I'm just like not doing a good job placing them where they need to be placed. Uh, so yeah. I'll come back to that one. Maybe. Um, Alright, but yeah, the... Um, Drawings of like Tom Sawyer, it's like he's got kind of like kind of light denim or jean. And I'm trying to like keep that saturation amp up. Kind of weird for me.
There it is. needs the, uh, the like clips. It's not in like a bronzish color. I think I'll go with kind of like the same metal as the thimble. That feels more balanced. Silver buttons is better, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think I want them to have um, like rolled up cups so, for the shorts. Yeah, I think we should just kind of like jump around frequently on this character. And just kind of build it up uniformly. And then basically when we run out of time, that calls it. So I think we could do the grub. It's kind of got a little bit of it figured it already. But Shadows more saturated. Can I make it feel like a gummy or something at the end?
trying to get more of that color kind of traveling through it with this light kind of like hitting it pretty strong. <laughs> mm, pigs in the blanket. Yum, yum, yum. I've enjoyed that for quite some time. Oh, thank you, Eileen. Thanks for popping in to say hi. Always appreciated. Grab the Larry link. It's up in the chat. I don't know if you need me to repost it. All right. I think I'll even have kind of like a bit of the mouse reflecting on the grub. due to kind of like the lighting I want to give this, I think most of this will be a little more kind of richly saturated. Um, and then where the light is directly hitting it, I might wash it out more. All right, it's kind of looking like a cute little grub.
right. Grim. Give it a little save. I think the lighting isn't quite what I was imagining just yet. That's okay. We'll work it out. Again, I am also kind of like trying to make this in a single day, so kind of rushing it, but I think it'll look pretty good at the end, I hope. All right, let's move on. Um, do the pile of kind of collected treasures, if you will. I'll just do another layer on top. And then once the uh, ropes are kind of like in the sunlight area, they'll go nice and bright and washed out. I think that's probably what I'll need to do is like wash out some of the, the like brightly lit stuff and keep the shadows saturated. I mean, that's how you balance it. So. stuff kind of facing upward but not kind of super deeply in the shadows can get a nice saturated color on those hopefully that looks okay So right now we're losing some of the readability. Um, like this arm in front of the bag, like that's all like really hard to even see what's going on. So I need to make the contrast much better here. Um, I think what I would like to do is kind of figure out what value structure I should have. I, Probably should have tried to decide this earlier, but here we are. So I'm thinking that 
thimble could go stay mid-tone and the ears and face could brighten up a bit more. So maybe if I create a brightness layer, clip it to the face and just get brighter overall. Overall lighten up maybe. Um, it's definitely too much. Okay, so the the like trash pile, or rather treasure pile. I think I'll do another. Uh, Brightness here and just go darker overall. Just make the whole thing quite a bit darker. Maybe just kind of like near the top side, I just lighten it a bit. Like that. Um, and then the ropes. These will be. Kind of like the same value, but um, okay. just a bit darker in all the same spots, perhaps, or maybe is it lighter where in it? kind of like in the sunlight. <laughs> Looking at the color version, it looks like it like beat up and tied up a like weird frogfish thing. And it's all just like smashed up and roped down. And it's like, got my dinner for tonight. Away! Um, so that's it quite a bit lighter. It's probably too much. Yeah, I'm just trying to like create more readability. That arm is definitely not reading at all. So that's a big problem. Um, I think I'll continue to try and darken that. Well, if the ropes are darker, then it does help the arm to be more readable. But like positioning of the, the arm maybe isn't very good either. I could potentially redraw that to be a little bit more clear. Um, what else? Uh, I think that I might just darken this rope up front to match the ones on the sides. Hmm. You know, I may have kind of like given myself a lighting guide with its sphere. Not really following it very well. Oops.
Um, I'm going to skip over to the page. Because everything else kind of has enough rendering that I can kind of like keep pushing it until I'm happy. At last, what have I uncovered? Okay, then the stick. Gonna get some cash out on that. But it'll kind of like have the um, paper color influencing it. This one's kind of like being a bit tough, I'm trying to get the kind of look that I want. It's not uh, not quite working for me as well as I'd hoped. That's how it goes. Um, some days it works, other days you're just fighting it. But by kind of doing this experiment and trying to learn from it, I'll probably figure out a bit more about how to do this. Um, I think I might just hide that sphere. Kind of throws the overall composition off. All right. um, and I think that back here, triangle brush. Um, get some kind of like more noise into it. So it's kind of like there's a lot going on, but it's almost too much to really focus on. Um, and notice how the rope and the material is like the same value, like the same brightness and darkness. But the colors are like contrasting, so that's why it's got that like kind of buzzy like Gah! when you look at it. So I want to change that. actually think that for this we could go a little more kind of really neutral rope. It's still a lot, huh? Oh, because it's just the brightness, that's why. Um, let's set you to a normal. Okay, now that's too saturated. Some mild texture brush for this. Nope, not that. Um, I think I just need to uh, 
knock this back a bit more. Let's use triangle skin and see if we can. Fighting me. It is a fight. I think it's just this arm, maybe even. I'm like trying to knock the kind of like the goods back to make the arm better, but the arm is just not good. So that could be it. Let's do something drastic. Oh no! Oh god, sorry little mouse buddy. the arm instead maybe Can I bring it up here and like keep it short he's kind of like whoa perhaps maybe Oh, you know what? I'll do um, the style grip. It's like lashed. Here in the fist. Does this make sense? I don't know why, but I'm like, this seems like a way it might be held. here to kind of show that kind of like trying to turn it where he's like that one's kind of slack so he's like pulling them apart like oh no how could you do that how could you take a chunk out of that I feel like that reads better now. Hmm. And I think I'll just make the, the pile like fill in the entire space behind the character. on the opposite side. Yeah, I think that might actually make it easier to kind of like balance the visuals. Like make things read. Yeah, I think that's going to be better. TBH. Kind of like a nice big pile of just junk. He's a collector mouse, all right. 
Doesn't that kill the silhouette? That's a good point, you know? Smart. Smart. Does. Um, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I think that instead, maybe we focus on separating that arm. Maybe. Hmm. hmm. Suddenly I'm looking at the shape of the arm and I'm like, that looks weird. I think I actually liked that filling in a bit more. I think that arm actually needs to stretch back further, kind of like in front of the ear might help that read if I kind of have the bright, like the ear lit. Hmm. Trying to think of like how far would it have to like stretch that. Hmm. So before I was worried the arm was too long because of the elbow bend and where that elbow joint was, but then looking at it with the silhouette just kind of looked too short suddenly. Okay, I'll try that and let's modify the rope again. Be able to just kind of move that up and rotate it a bit. Okay, that works. I actually like how that loop is kind of swinging up in a way. Like it just yanked it and stopped it, and now it's kind of like the, the momentum is pulling it in that direction. So that reads for that action. Um, and then whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, well, let's just see what happens if I kind of keep going with this direction. just kind of like lower that pile so the silhouette works a bit better there. That rope is crazy here. It's kind of like grabbing too much attention anyway, so I want to pull that back. It really does look like some kind of creature strapped down, covered in a lot of rope. Or net. And that makes more sense. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna straighten this rope again. And then if I have that elbow kind of peeking out from behind it, now I think our silhouette is kind of a little better. Uh, and 
and the pile of wonderful treasures. Not at all garbage. Not at all garbage. To me, I think that's going to work better. I do need to adjust the values again, because um, I want that mouse kind of just to stand out in front of it. Um, so I think overall the jeans just need to kind of like be lighter here. darker. Okay, and then the ropes, same deal. Especially if I'm going to have these ropes in front, these will be getting hit by the sunlight. So I am going to lighten those up quite a bit. Especially here. Onward, my untrusty steed. Please stop eating my treasures. Okay, I almost want to, like, this might be a way to kind of, like, try and fix things. Um, I set you to normal and you to brightness. Now, what I can do is just kind of go over the whole thing with like a value pass to just kind of define like, all right, these are the values that I want it to have. If I darken the grub and I lighten character. That's probably not going to be very great. kind of reads better, but then the moment I like switch back to color, it's going to look pretty bad. I'm suspecting. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this will be a good direction to take it in. I'm suspecting this won't look quite too good. Shadow is way too dark. Grub is like gross. Okay, so not that. Let's try a different composition for it. Um, so that's that direction. Maybe the mouse is kind of like 
maybe the grub overall is like kind of a mid tone. And then the character is more kind of dark and contrasting. That might make more sense too. So I want to draw more attention to the character. Ropes could be greater, that's fine. So they'll read across the character. That kind of works with the, the like the eyes and the face. And then the thimble can be darker in general. this back more to kind of like blend in with the grub, right? I do think that reads much better. Um, and then the arms can kind of like, they're like parts of the nose in shadow. Could go even deeper, perhaps. Let's see if that works. where it's like, aha, too far. Yeah. Um, but it almost makes me want to lighten up this pile behind. I think it would be nice. to see how it looks. Yeah, I think I like that better. Hello, generic potato. <laughs> I enjoy uh, when people are like surprised to hear me just kind of like mumbling on their computer and they forget the stream is on. Alright. So I think that might be better. One thing we can also check is the uh, silhouette. 
So let's do that. Okay, so it's a little hard to like see exactly what's going on, but like I think being able to see this hand with what's clearly a branch and kind of like maybe that's you know mouse ears with a hat. It'd be better if this this hand was like more visible. Um, but I kind of like it like pulling it as far as it can. If I were to change that, maybe it'd be like tucking that ear further back, or I don't know, maybe maybe the trash pile just doesn't need to be quite like that at all. If I like just got rid of that trash pile or made it like way smaller. And by trash pile, I mean treasure pile, of course. Sorry, this friend. Um, so if I did that, I could kind of tilt the arm back so that it stands out from the ear again. Um, let me just. Do I want to do a full copy of stuff to, before I do that? Might be a bit. So here's another conundrum is like I've done this value kind of like experiment. It's kind of working. But it is a layer above all layers. So if I were to combine it, it'd be neat kind of like having to merge it with all the different layers. Um, and I think I need to keep these separated for now. So these, that I want to be separate because the rope over top is very useful. These could combine. That could combine. The face, yep, that could all combine together. So the mouse is one layer. And that's easy to work with. That being separate is useful. The ropes can all combine. And the trash on the back can all combine. So now I can just kind of carve away at that uh, and then put the value over top of those independently. Okay, so I'm going to make a copy of that. I'm going to make a copy of that. And that, and that, and that. Cool. OK, now get rid of that. Now I've kind of transferred all that information into modification layers that only affect those areas. So I think that'll be better. Um, Then I can make it more subtle as well. Like so. And mouse, yes. Okay, uh, one thing I was going to do. Is reshape the treasure pile and the mouse. All right. Thank you, Lenari. Have a good weekend. Yeah, no, it's we're getting there. We're, we're gonna be done mice in a bit. Pretty exciting. But take care. Thanks for hanging out. The, the light on the dark ear. There we go. Like so. Okay. Um, so actually, as much as I like that, I'm actually gonna try adjusting the arm. So 
for the silhouette. Okay. Very kind of like scatterbrained today, so I didn't end up taking all my medication. Oops. That ADHD brain. All right. So if I merge these now, Just realized I could clean up a bit of these details before I merge them. Actually, you know what? I don't even need to merge them. Clip Studio can like transform stuff as a stack of layers. So what I can do is grab both of these and make my selection. And then Okay, so now it's off to the side again. Just really kind of like doing a number on this arm, huh? But I'm curious as to like improving the, um, the silhouette. Which I think this is a good idea. Now the rope, the rope, layers are getting kind of confused. Um, might be able to just do like a sheer transform. Yeah, it kind of works. Need to fix that. Oh, I should have um, done that transform selection with both of these layers grabbed. That's right. And that would help. that pass over the foot. Okay. A little easier to work with that, I think. All right, um, let's take a quick look at the silhouette. All my colors are like way messed up now. It's great. It's great. Okay, um, and also the shadow won't really kind of be affected by that silhouette layer quite the same. Kind of more like that. Okay, I can actually see what's going on with that silhouette now. But, trash pile. I do want to bring that trash pile back. But I think we just need a trunk. Okay. 
It still seems like there's like quite a bit loaded up, right? So that's not so bad. I think I just kind of put way too many ropes on this too. Shadow on the mouse can be toned down now. Don't need to be quite so dramatic. So, lighten that up. Fix that top of the trousers. Also, I need to stuff treasures back into the, uh, the pooch. I detailed that last. Thanks. Yeah, no, I, I feel like that was a fun little detail. Kind of like, oh um, no. How could 
could you been searching for these pages or something? Either way, it tells a cute little story about the grub. And taking a nice chomp out of the page. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that's okay. The colors are all over the place now. But let's take a look at this a little bit. I think this is still good. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm happy with that. Um this hand is really quite a mess. Super duper quite a big mess and like the length of it and stuff feels off again. Let's do a flip. I'm probably at the limit of how much control I can impart on the look of this using just the, the brightness of the layer. I think I should probably switch back to actually painting it uh, just because all my colors are getting way out of, out of control. But let's just take a quick look at how that value structure has changed on the character. So it's quite a bit different. Um, I definitely think that the, the outfit being darker does help that read. So I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Now, I think I'm just gonna merge that down. And we'll just kind of go in and paint with the actual colors of things now. And let's come back here to Sphere. I want to get more kind of warm orange and the kind of like shadow area, but like pointed upwards. I just need to get like more warm colors in here in general, I think.
Oh yeah, something else that I should definitely do is put in that background kind of texture because that's probably going to change the look of this. Completely forgot to do that. Uh, all right, import image. And these, Oop. you get to go all the way down here. I can't believe I forgot to put in the texture till now. Because I can really kind of like change, you know, like look at the value structure now. It's like, oh, there goes the mouse, totally disappeared. Um, so I gotta pull this back quite a bit more or punch it up, right? But I think it'd be better to pull it back, kind of blast the mouse out in front of it. Probably like start these characters with that layer kind of already active. Um, but if we go to this character now, like brightness, and then just see how bright we can go. sun is exploding. <laughs> now, little mousey, don't stare directly into the supernova.
actually, you know what? Looking at this uh, on my other monitor, I think I think this is maybe the way it's gonna go. light almost so I went I went from like being like I want it to be like crazy saturated and super bright and colorful to, to that It's kind of fun. I think I'll just need to kind of like mix a little more color in the parts. I like the light just kind of washing stuff out it is not bad. It kind of, kind of works, I think. Maybe. And it's like, is that stick gonna be? I guess it would be fairly light. It's like an old dried out kind of branch that has been kind of like sun bleached, like the bark is being peeled off. Yeah, I think that works. At least with the um, the background behind it, it definitely gives more of an opportunity to kind of do that for the render. I think I might pull it back on the ice just a bit more. The actual kind of like reflection in the eyes just going to be pure white. So that has a stronger contrast. Um, and then if I turn the silhouette back on, turn that off. I think that silhouette's fine. Okay, so thimble doesn't look like a thimble anymore. Um, I do like the washed out kind of lighting better than I thought I would. Um, let's see. I have so 
I'll be right back. Need to take a short break. And a Mac. Hello. Okay. Let's see. It's been a bit of a struggle to kind of get the lighting how I want it. I did expect it to fight me though, so I cannot say that I'm too surprised. They have the colors just been quite right. But yeah, the shadows need more color than this the this the thing. Just like all the kind of brightness and saturation and stuff like that that I've been kind of mixing around has definitely lost all that kind of punchy color that I wanted in it in the first place. So just going to manually bring that back in. But we still have maybe an hour left before I'll probably be like too exhausted to continue the stream. Or maybe we'll go till six. We'll see. We'll see what I got left in me. Not too bad. I actually <laughs> have another coffee. <laughs> Which is probably a bad idea to drink because I like needing to try and sleep earlier, but it is also tasty. Um, all right.
need to do more flipping. These arms are like incredibly different thicknesses. Interesting. How did this happen? Rule this. Enjoy like like chunky kind of noodly arms and limbs on like cutesy characters. It can look pretty fun when it works, but if they're very inconsistent, it uh, they look kind of weird. sand below. I'm going to like hit that with the bright light. I think that will help too. As well as the grub. The grub should probably be getting just totally blasted with some of this bright light as well. Considering how it's kind of like working on the mouse. Only seem fair. Yeah. 
better. Rope. Rope should also have the, more of this blown out color. The fist shouldn't be white like that, but fix that. Also the um, brightness on this back here. Maybe almost figured it out. Hmm. I as well would like a trading card game made of no sun. Just there a little bit. Can't even tell what's going on with this rope anymore. Probably be behind it better. Uh, I think I'll just redraw that part of the road, to be honest. It's just kind of messy now at this point. Now this arm feels like it's too long. What am I doing? It's just going all over the board. Back and forth, back and forth. All right. You know what? I am just going to merge this and deal with it how I normally paint stuff. Just directly. Okay, so this and the thickness should be like toned down a bit. I'm straightening the arm out a bit more. Get some of that color banding at the edge of the shadow. to like show the intensity of how great this light is. This would be more a rim light there on that 
Um, so it's kind of coming forward. So this will be kind of more of that brighter orange. Could have this arm and probably should have this arm casting like a shadow across the character here. Yeah. So like extended it forward. forward. We have like this branch kind of casting a shadow. On the face. This I should have done with the brightness layer of course. Yeah, I don't know if I want to have it go across the face like that. Alright, so, well, let's see, stick, go on to, can I give it more color to brighten it up? A situation where it's like very close to being okay and good. 
but I've been like looking at it for too long. You know? Let's see. Let's paint it like this for a little experiment. Get like a real fresh perspective on on everything. Back to the mouse. Like because the grub is like directly below and kind of gonna have some pretty bright bounce light coming from it, it kind of like put some of that color into these shadows a bit more. to like step back and reassess on Monday.
I think that kind of reached a certain point with this where I'm, I'm kind of like probably going to want to look at it with fresh eyes before I can kind of really take it to the next step, next stage on it, right? So I'm thinking I'm going to wrap up. But before we do, I'm going to switch to the time lapse and give this a save first. And there's another thing that I can work on, but I have to do that off stream because it's very spoilery. But uh, still have some time left in my day to keep working, but I think I, think I need to kind of like step back from this one to kind of like really reassess how it's working. So I feel like I'm just kind of like fighting it now. If I get a fresh eyes on it, it will make it much easier. But let's just enjoy the time lapse. And uh, yeah, I'll post the Larry link in the chat again. In case anyone missed that. And uh, yeah. Oh, oh boy! Not terrible for a single kind of session. I mean, most of the characters that I've worked on have taken kind of like two days usually, um, and then uh, I definitely need to hit the page with a lot more light. But again, yeah, like when I look at this with fresh eyes, I'm gonna like know exactly what it needs. But yeah, thanks, George. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's like some stuff in the the sketch that I feel like it kind of like has a little more whimsy and kind of wonderment in it, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe it's just like the shape of the mouth is just kind of more more like. Oh, as opposed to, ah, yeah, so I'll figure that out, though. Yeah, and the light is just not consistent how I want it to be. It's just not quite working. Um, but yeah, I think I just need to kind of look at it with fresh eyes. Like, 
the top of the arm is completely washed out. It has kind of like a hard edge shadow, and then the face isn't being treated with the same light. Um, and that back arm, like the arm kind of yanking the ropes, like it's all kind of like close, but none of it is consistent. Um, and I want to make that more consistent, but I think I just need to kind of step back first. Plus, I want to finish up the other thing I'm working on this week because um, it's pretty important. But yeah, like even the kind of like the darker lighting on it feels a little more, you know, readable like right now. It'll be interesting to watch kind of like when we start to mess with the lighting, just kind of where it was, where it started, like where it went to. Um, so I'm going to pay more attention to the actual kind of time lapse now. Mm-hmm. Thimble hat without the green. Yeah, definitely the, the thimble seems off. Um, I just kind of phoned it in at the end, I think. Um, but I'll hide that so I can just make sure that that silhouette reads better. And like, I, I want the little kind of thimble dents. Um, make sure that the kind of the shape of it feels thimbly enough. So I've already kind of like swapped to the darker uh, outfit. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not consistent with the the actual like sphere test that I gave myself. There we go, I just blasted it out. Yeah, like that arm was too bright. It's kind of neat with it washed out. I I do like it, um, but yeah, washing it out, kind of saturating the shadows is nice. I just need to like have much more consistency with like the light angle and the cast shadows and getting the color inside those cast shadows would be good. Um, just kind of like being smarter about that. I'm just kind of like being fighting back and forth, forth with it to the point where it's just like, I don't even want to think anymore. And here we go. And we've watched it all. Hmm. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Um, but I, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, it's definitely like, you know, it's a fun character. Um, definitely wouldn't have kind of like created what I have without your guidance and kind of like giving me kind of like feedback. Um, so I appreciate that, of course. Um, but yeah, I'll probably be, uh, well, it'll probably be Dave next week um, and then Ert again, but we'll see. Um, Again, there's still lots to draw for the actual kind of new area, so I'm going to be doing as many feedback writers as I can. So there's a lot to do. Um, but uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all have a good and awesome weekend. And stay safe and take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I shall catch you all next time.